Hello, my name's Michael Keneally and this video is all about the astrology of April 2024. April 2024 energies are horrible and so I describe them and offer ways to deal with them. They're complicated and they need to be understood so this video will be probably need to be a bit longer than usual but it's worth it so please stick with it. So let's start. The energies of April 2024 are horrible so we need to know what these are and work out how we're going to deal with them. They're actually very complex and in some ways they pull us in completely different directions. And we also so very much need to be aware where there are openings for intuition and insights and healings. Amidst the energies which are so tense and fraught. So this needs you know, uh, to be a thorough and detailed list of the energies and how to deal with them. So please do allow for the fact that it could be a bit mind-bending, but here we go. Um, you can see the charts and the ephemeris in both Western astrology and Vedic astrology on my Star Wheel Astrology website, the April month page under the More drop down. So the first thing to talk about is the Moon and then I go through all the other planets. And regarding the Moon, well the first item is huge, huge. There's a new Moon total solar eclipse on the 8th of April. Sun, Moon and Chiron are all at 25 Vedic Pisces in Revati Nakshatra on the 8th of April, the day of the huge solar eclipse. Now a solar eclipse happens during a new moon when the sun and moon are conjunct. So it's when the moon passes between the earth and the sun, blocking our view of at least part of the sun and a total solar eclipse, like the one happening on April the 8th, is where the moon totally blocks the light of the sun. And just by way of contrast, a lunar eclipse happens at a full moon, when the sun and moon are in opposition to each other. And so the Earth's shadow blocks out our view of the moon. The last lunar eclipse was in fact the full moon lunar eclipse of the 25th of March just gone. And you know you can see my um, Star Wheel blog post about that eclipse. Now an important thing is that eclipses bring matters to light. They urge each of us to take action towards dealing with the matters that are brought to the light. And this essentially is because the um, axis of the sun and the moon is conjunct the nodes of the moon, Rahu North Node, Ketu South Node, which are, well, Ketu is um, a statement of the karmas and ancestral and past life scripts that we bring into this life and Rahu, North Node, is a statement of our fate and destiny direction and life purpose direction. And that's why eclipses have such earthquake energy. And by the way, your dreams can be very valuable to tap into in eclipse time. So you might like to make a note of your dream immediately you wake up, otherwise you forget it. And then later, 
Have a dream work session. Go into your dream by doing dream work, often in sharing with another person who's sharing their dream with you. I've done loads of this. Huge realisations are very likely to show themselves. Realisations that you simply never realised were there. So you can have a look at working with dreams on my Druid Forest School website, the shamanism page, and book a session if you wish. So this April the 8th solar eclipse is conjunct the nodal axis with Rahu North Node at 21 Pisces and K2 South Node at 21 Virgo in Hastanak Chatra. Um, a crucial additional part of this eclipse is the tense, angry and dangerous Mars-Saturn conjunction at the same time at 20 Aquarius. And another crucial dimension to know is that it's the Great American Eclipse and I put a link in the associated blog post which actually shows the map of the totality running through the United States. And also I list the main cities and states in the associated blog post. Now, this is huge. The Mars-Saturn conjunction, which I've just mentioned, is essentially characterised by terrible anger and frustration and it adds that energy to the eclipse. I explain all about that in the section on Saturn below. But importantly, this fraught energy will also challenge us to find out what's real about our beliefs and assumptions. What's actually authentic? What do we want to dump? Anger and frustration will erupt, but we mustn't give in to it. We must breathe and share and take a break and be loving. It's also super important to realise that Pluto, at the time of this eclipse, is square Pluto in the birth chart of the USA, 4776, when Pluto was at 6 degrees 49 Capricorn. So this Pluto return, sorry I said square, it's conjunct, Pluto at the time of the eclipse is conjunct Pluto in the chart of the USA. So this is all about power. Power for the people of the USA to handle either constructively and developmentally or terribly destructively. And because it's the USA, the whole of the world will be affected. And incidentally, the Vedic Lunar New Year starts on this eclipse with the Mars-Saturn conjunction as part of it. So this predicts a horribly tense and angry year ahead indeed. So do be aware and prepared that this is a major eclipse with ongoing great tension, great emotional intensity, there's the great challenge to each of us for insights and awakenings. Make space. Make a note of them. Introduce them into the way you run your life. And at this time, cross the bridge to your unconscious side and your shadow side to see what's there, stuff down in your unconscious that is actually driving you, so as to get the fullness of benefiting from the eclipse energies. And do remember that eclipse need not be calamity. Eclipses absolutely also can be death and rebirth energy for us. 
I remember before we moved here to Ireland, we visited the west of Ireland and there was an eclipse and we had the realisation that we should come to Ireland and then did the move. Now this eclipse will affect individuals big time who have planets in the Virgo Pisces axis, in the Aquarius Leo axis, in the Capricorn Cancer axis, plus other signs that receive an aspect from the eclipse. So a lot of people will be affected directly by this eclipse and all of us by the broader dimensions of this eclipse and what it will lead to. Do remember, by the way, that the moon actually transits conjunct the Mars-Saturn conjunction on the 7th of April as it heads towards the eclipse of the 8th of April and everyone will feel the moon caught up in the Mars-Saturn conjunction. And very important further point, what are we to make of the crucial fact that Chiron Chiron, the wounded healer, is conjunct this new moon eclipse. Well, Chiron's presence here gives us a huge opportunity. And that opportunity is to contact our wounds and seek to bring healing to them seek to act in a healed way in regard to them um, as time goes on from this eclipse. Chiron is our existential wound in the healing of which we actually become the healer of others as well. You can get a reading from me which would focus on astrology's definition of your Chiron existential wound and ways to heal it. And you can book your reading with me about this from my Star Wheel Astrology website. It is so important. A wonderful major feature of my work is that I always totally combine Western and Vedic astrology. You absolutely need both for an adequate and true declaration. And what I would say is that when I started Vedic Astrology, I was told, oh, your Mars is super powerful, it's in Scorpio. But that isn't true, because as Western Astrology reveals, I have Chiron conjunct my Mars. Do you see what I mean? You need both. Vedic Astrology has endless gems that Western Astrology doesn't contain, but you do need both. So watch out for my upcoming video and blog about this new moon eclipse of April the 8th. <coughs> so the next uh, sorry, feature to deal with the moon is the full moon of the 24th of April. This has moon at 10 Libra and sun at 10 Aries. So the moon is in Swati Nakshatra and the sun is in Ashwini Nakshatra at the time of the April full moon. It's really big if you have planets in the Libra Aries axis, this full moon coming up, or in signs from which an aspect is thrown from Libra. So do look out for my video and blog about the April full moon of the 24th. So let's move on now from the moon to the sun. Now the sun transits from 19 Vedic Pisces to 16 Vedic Aries in April. Now when sun's in Pisces, the mystical nature of the sun, this is from You know, it's the first of the two signs the sun goes to, Pisces first, then Aries. And when it's in Pisces, the mystical nature of the sun is actually potentially enhanced by the fact that Neptune is transiting in Pisces now. 
we can get wonderful realizations and problems and huge issues solved and even completed by the visions that can come to us at this time. It certainly happened to me about three times recently. When Sun is in Pisces, though, it does require dedication and service to still fully connect with the actual divine nature of the Sun, rather than to get afflicted by Pisces' negative side of loss and drain or illusion. But the potential is there. So please hear what I said about vision work and realizations. Now the sun transits the final nakshatra of Pisces, Revati nakshatra, the 27th nakshatra of the wonderful lunar zodiac, which is so accurately powerful in describing our emotionally based consciousness and self. Sun transits Revity from March the 31st to April the 14th. Now one thing about Revity energy is they can be too critical unless they purge this and heal it. But the wonderful thing is Revity energy is innately orientated to spiritual awareness and growth. And Revity's root motivation is towards spiritual liberation. How wonderful that we can open to that in April and especially around the eclipse of April the 8th. Note that Sun is conjunct Rahu the North Node on the 5th of April, just before the eclipse, at 21 Pisces. And this is a very me-first driven energy and it destabilises the mind and makes people obsess and trample. Um, a couple of leaders, recent leaders from both the US and the UK have Sun Conjunct Rahu. And all people with Sun Conjunct Raku can be driven by insatiable ego. A very important and useful thing to realise is that Sun is in a Gandanta zone in the Pisces Aries sign transition from the 10th to the 17th of April. Well, the Gandanta zones are the transition points from water sign to fire sign. Approximately, at most, the last four degrees of Pisces, the first four degrees of Aries, and the closer you are to the zero point with your planet, the vaster the Gandanta realizations will be. And Gandanta realizations are that this world is immaterial. And so they bring the challenge to you to go beyond this world to the God realm, to the divine realm. So this is such a time to do wise and constructive vision work. Do vision work and intuitive work now to identify the nature of your life issues, to solve and heal your life issues. And having left Pisces, the sun enters Aries on April the 14th. Well, do be aware of the massive difference from Pisces energies to Aries energies, where the sun finds himself and finds his energy. And of course, this is a carry-on from the spring equinox on March the 20th. So at no point during April... Fail to visualise and embrace your Aries warrior dimension, the ethical spiritual warrior. But do not forget your Piscean visionary self. Do not jettison your spiritual Piscean visionary self. And the sun actually ends April at 16 Aries. 
So we now go on to Mercury. Well, Mercury starts April at 3 Aries. And so it's actually, you know, in Ashwini Nakshatra, the healer's Nakshatra, the first Nakshatra of the 27, and it's still in the Gandanta. And it's receiving a square from Pluto at 7 Capricorn. So what a powerful Mercury it is at the start of April. But Mercury turns retrograde the next day on the 2nd of April, remaining retrograde until the 25th of April. So during this retrograde, Mercury re-enters Pisces on the 10th of April. And so obviously it's Gandanta until April the 13th. Now, obviously, we have to be aware that retrograde Mercury can be horrible for posts and communications and IT issues, etc. But also be aware that Mercury in the Pisces Aries Candanta can be wonderful for sudden insights and clarities and for doing vision work. And vision work can certainly be of help if you use it and act on it at the time of these awful energies of April 2024. Be aware also that Mercury retrograde can be good for returning our focus to unfinished business and tying up loose ends and finishing unfinished issues in our life. So be aware that when Mercury is transiting at the end of the sign Pisces, Mercury is actually in the nakshatra it rules, Revati nakshatra. So this may cause difficulties for people with planets in Revati, for their nature and expression. But equally, given the nature of Mercury, Mercury may come up with some clever solutions for any of us now. <laughs> 